I'd like to call the meeting to order of Western Riverside Council of Governments, Monday, April Fool's Day. <laughs> we're not really here. <laughs> <laughs> and the joke is we're not really having a meeting. No, just kidding. <clears throat> if you're here, register so on your screen in front of you so that Janice can show in the roll call that you are here. And when we're done with that, we'll have uh, Mr. Bash lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. After we're done taking the roll. And I'd just like to add that Supervisor Jeffries walked in, so he's present. Okay, I'm still waiting on City of Menifee. All right, April Fools, he is here. All right, we're all here. Please rise. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Kevin. First item on the agenda is item number four, minutes from March 4th. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry, uh, public comments isn't before that. Do you have that. someone to speak? Yeah. Pardon me? Oh. Yes. Oh, Arnold? Yes, sir. Arnold. <laughs> Come on up. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Good Mr. Afternoon. Chairman. This looks like deja vu because I was at RCTC last month and you were chairing that meeting. What the? So. <laughs> I'm going to wake you up must, here from this. <laughs> you must be very busy, so, but thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, give a public comment. Just wanted to uh, let everybody know that registration is now open for the 54th Annual Southern California Association of Governments Regional Conference in General Assembly. We are convening May 1st through 3rd at the JW Marriott in Palm Desert. Uh, this year's theme is Beyond Boundaries, and that's all about transcending jurisdictional boundaries of cities and counties to plan for the whole region. So really encourage you to sign up, get your hotel rooms. If you have not selected your General Assembly delegate, then really would encourage you to do that. And then let us know if it's your delegate or your alternate that plans to spend the night, because you know we do include a hotel night for the GA delegate, or if, it's the, if the voting person is the alternate. And as you all know, all elected officials' registration is also waived, and for your city manager. So please register, and we'll see you um, on May the 1st through the 3rd in Palm Desert. Thank you. Wow, good job. Well, thank you for coming in. Okay, now we're down to minutes. Uh, minutes for March 4th. If you have uh, comments about the minutes or amendments to the minutes, please speak up now. Otherwise, cast your vote. Waiting on District 1. Where is District 1? All right. Minutes are approved. 20 uh, yeses, no noes, and two abstentions. Move down to consent calendar. Uh, consent calendar has two action items, uh, 5A and 5B, and then several uh, information items, C through H. Does anyone require or request to pull an item from the consent calendar? If not, I'll accept a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. All right, consent calendar is approved on a vote of 23 yeses, no noes, no abstentions. That brings us down to uh, reports and discussions. 6A is PACE program updates, and I understand Casey is not here today. April Fools. Yes. Yeah. Um, good afternoon, my name is Michael Wasgut. I'm the program manager for our PACE programs, here to uh, present, give you an update. Uh, for reference, our PACE programs finance energy efficiency, water conservation, renewable energy, and seismic uh, strengthening improvements to re residential and commercial uh, properties that are paid back through their property taxes. Um, we have a ge our general update with numbers today, uh, a new PACE provider that will bring forth the documents for approval. 
uh, our 30 year pace term uh, for commercial projects and uh, refinancing on commercial pace programs that we'll be covering today. Uh, so our general update uh, with numbers, um, as we've been mentioning, the residential program is a little slower than usual. We had about 250 projects last month and just under $5,650,000 five in uh, projects. Our commercial programs are still uh, coming up. Uh, this, this next month, we expect some uh, pretty decent movement. Uh, mostly because of Twain, who is the uh, new provider that we're going to be bringing on. Uh, they are based out of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, Casey and I went out in January to view their operations, meet with staff, and uh, see how they work. Uh, they came to the administration finance committee, in, or the ad hoc committee in January, admin and finance in February, where they were uh, unanimously, unanimously recommended to come forward to exec for approval. Uh, we brought them forward uh, two months ago to this committee and uh, are bringing the, their documents forward for approval now. Uh, they have a large project in Temecula, which uh, will if I'm not mistaken, actually be more than our cumulative commercial pace pro projects in total uh, if this one project goes through, which they are basically ready to go right now once we, we approve them. Um, they will be coming into the statewide program, uh, so they will be able to work uh, in all 400 jurisdictions throughout the state for us. Um, next, uh, we are looking to approve refinancing for commercial pace projects. Uh, refinancing, uh, similar to refinancing your loan on your home, it would be uh, financing a previously installed product that would be, then be wrapped into the PACE, uh, PACE assessment on the property. Um, state law does allow for it. Our program report currently does not uh, have any, it's silent, doesn't have any, uh, any decision one way or the other. Um, throughout the state uh, at Admin and Finance, we, we presented that every other program within the state does offer refinancing, although it's various levels that they, they allow. Some of them allow look back, some of them allow strictly just refinancing. Um, and so uh, Administration Finance Committee recommended to the board to approve refinancing um, and then staff will be working on the, the uh, parameters to which uh, refinancing will be allowed in our programs. Um, the 30-year uh, term for commercial construction, uh, currently our uh, assessments go to 25 years in the commercial program. A typical development loan is about 30 years and they uh, have a replacement reserve contingency which is funds within the financing for the property that allows for the uh, owner to replace, you know, if the carpeting goes out or something goes bad during the construction, they have money in there to replace things that generally go out in the 30 years. Um, and so the recommendation was to allow for uh, the new construction 30 year term, assuming if they show documented uh, re replacement reserve contingency, and it would only be for new construction. Um, so we have three actions today. Uh, the first one is to approve Twain Financial Partners uh, documents to be a commercial provider in our statewide program. The second is to approve the uh, Administration and Finance Committee's uh, recommendation to allow for refinancing on commercial projects. And uh, the third is to allow for a uh, 30-year term on uh, commercial projects. With that, uh, that concludes my presentation. If anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to take them now. So, um, Mr. Hyatt, did, did you have a question? <laughs> I, I, I thought I heard your chime chiming. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you, Michael. That was uh, so. Uh, the requested action is there before you. It's also on your agenda. There are three items uh, that they are requesting. Is there any additional comments? We have a motion and a second. Please register your votes. And that motion is approved. 23 yeses, no noes, no abstentions. Move down to, we'll skip over League of California Cities report because Aaron is not going to be here today. That brings us to C6, TUMF Program Activities Update. Mr. Christopher Gray. Good afternoon, members of the board, Supervisor Washington. I'm here to follow up my um, exciting presentation on Rena with a more, uh, <laughs> even more exciting um, discussion of some uh, TUMF items we'd like you to take some action on. Um, 
For those of you who are new to WRCOG, we engage in a regular process to program TUMF money uh, through the transportation improvement process. Uh, we regularly convene meetings of each of our sub areas. In this particular case, this is the central zone, which includes Moreno Valley, Menifee, uh, Riverside County, uh, Paris, and March JPA. Um, we have been collecting some additional revenue within the central zone. There's very strong level development activity, and therefore we convene a, a meeting um, in late 2018. Uh, we met with city managers and public works directors, and we are here today to ask you to approve that tip. Uh, some fundings for the projects include uh, the Scott Road Interchange, the Moreno Beach Drive Interchange in Moreno Valley, uh, Getz Road in the city of Paris, and some funding for uh, some preliminary studies on the Cahalco Road widening in the county of Riverside. Um, once we had the list of projects, we took it to a, a meeting of the elected officials for each of these jurisdictions where the TIP was approved as well. Um, so we uh, just ask that the executive committee approve all TIP requests. Um, and so that's uh, something we do on a regular basis. Uh, the other item we want to bring to your attention is we've been making some uh, changes in our TUMF network. Um, one of the um, lesser known elements of the TUMF network is we designate all projects either as secondary or backbone. Uh, secondary projects are intended to be uh, local, uh, local serving, city serving streets, backbone projects uh, are intended to be regional projects that serve multiple jurisdictions. Uh, during some ongoing discussions with members of the Pass Zone, which is Manning, Beaumont, Calamesa, we determined that uh, there was a lack of regional projects uh, within the Pass Zone. And for example, before the city of Beaumont rejoined the program, there were no regional projects within the Pass Zone. Um, based on a request of uh, the agencies, uh, we're asking you today to um, formally amend the network to designate the following projects as uh, regional projects would be the Highland Springs Avenue Interchange, the Cherry Valley Boulevard Interchange, and the I-10 Bypass. Um, the effect of this change is to allow these projects to compete for funding with RCTC. Um, RCTC has provisions within uh, Measure A and some of its other funding programs that projects designated as regional projects are allowed to access certain kinds of funding. Uh, we would also note this is a minor administrative change. It doesn't uh, affect the TUMP fees, the overall cost of the network. It simply is a uh, change in one of our tables to change some of the text from uh, where it says secondary for project type to backbone. Um, I'm sorry. We, uh, you had actually previously directed us to make this amendment back in, uh, at the end of 2018 when we approved an allocation process for funding from our Beaumont third party settlement. Um, the other item, and this is just an um, um, item we want to inform you on, is we are in the process of developing an online TUMF payment portal. So for those ent entities who've delegated TUMF collection to WRCOG, um, we will be developing an online portal. We released an RFP, and uh, the project's going to be starting later this week, and we expect to be done by uh, the July-August timeframe. Uh, so again, developers would be allowed to submit their uh, TUMF uh, assessments and their payments electronically via credit card, electronic payment, uh, and such. Uh, I would note that we're already accepting payments from a number of jurisdictions. We've received uh, a number of electronic payments so far. Uh, we're supposed to get our first actual physical check this week, uh, but this is just intended to make it easier for developers to submit their TUMF assessments and streamline the process. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, uh, we're asking you to uh, take two actions, approve the central zone tip and approve the administrative amendment to the TUMF, um, the TUMF network. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Christopher. Are there questions for staff? Seeing none? Excellent. Thank you. And brief. Try. I try. <laughs> we have a motion and a second on the item. Please register your votes. Waiting on Western Municipal. Oh. Well, I'll just end that. Did you abstain? Did you, did you abstain? No? Is that you? Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Um, Western uh, does not vote on TUMF matters. 
Yeah, so Eastern. Eastern voted, but they abstained, and Western just didn't do anything. I see. I do note in the minutes, sir, that the water districts are abstained from those items. You want a second go around? I, I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm treading on bear. <laughs> There's going to be payback later. <laughs> All right, that motion is approved uh, with 21 yes votes, zero no votes, and two abstentions. Next item, <laughs> fee comparison analysis. Good afternoon, Supervisor Washington, members of the committee. Um, my name is Christopher Zhang, uh, staff at WRCOG, and I'm going to give you a report on our fee comparison analysis. We just want to—I want to start off that the numbers we're showing are actually a part of the analysis and are not a part of a crank or anything. So, in 2016, uh, WRCOG conducted a study analyzing fees that jurisdictions and various agencies charge on new development. We analyze fees for each of our WRCOG member jurisdictions, as well as a few jurisdictions in neighboring Coachella Valley and San Bernardino County for further comparison. That study was presented to the executive committee at the beginning of 2017, and we also gave additional presentations to city councils provided on request. So based on the positive feedback that we received, uh, WRCOG indicated that we'd uh, update the study every two years, and so we're here to provide you an updated study of this analysis. We utilized the same methodology as 2016, uh, but we did revise uh, the water and sewer assumptions based on valuable feedback from the water district, water district staff. So five different development types were analyzed, single family residential, multifamily residential, retail, office, and industrial. The sizes and number of units are an average of the types of development uh, we've seen from a review of TUMF data. Shown, are, shown on your screen are development types for single and multifamily residential. And next we have retail, office, and industrial and their respective sizes for this analysis. So fees and fee structures differ from one jurisdiction to another. So our project team actually itemized fees into different categories. We have a regional transportation fee, which for the WRCOG subregion is TUMF, uh, water sewer connection fees, other city fees, which are city transportation, parks, and other citywide capital facilities fees, uh, school fees, and other regional fees such as MS MSHCP and the Stevens Kangaroo Rat. With that, the average diff for single family residential in the subregion is about $48,000 per unit and $30,000 per unit for multifamily residential. For residential uses, TUMF makes up about 20% of the total diff. Water sewer is about 35%. 22% is other city fees. 18% is school fees, and 5% is other regional fees. The, aver the average retail diff in the subregion is about $24 a square foot. Uh, industrial is about $5.20 per square foot, and office is around $14 per square foot, with a wider percentage spread of fees that make up the, the total diff. For instance, TUF make TUMF makes up for almost 32% of the total retail diff, but is, only, is about 16% of the total office diff. Now, we're all really competitive and want to make sure how we compare with others on, our dia on the dais. So before we get there, let's see how we compare with other neighbors, uh, with our neighbors outside of the subregion. Our residential diff averages for both multifamily and single family are lower than our uh, friends in San Bernardino County, but higher, but higher than Coachella Valley. Now, as part of the transportation staff and being a competitive person, it's my duty to point out that San Bernardino's regional transportation fee is actually low because they don't have a countywide fee program. However, uh, you'll see in the final report that what they don't charge at the regional level, they account for at the city level. So you'll see a higher uh, city fee percentage for the, for the calculations that we did for San Bernardino County. Now here are the averages for here are the average diffs for retail, office, and industrial in the subregion, Coachella Valley and San Bernardino County. The one land use where our average diffs are higher than the San Bernardino County 
higher than San Bernardino County is, actually, is retail. It's also important to note that the retail use is the one use where, average diff, where the average diff for Coachella Valley is higher than San Bernardino County. Uh, development fees are, I'm sure development fees are a constant conversation topic for you and your staff as they are for, for the TUMF staff. So shown on your screens are the TUMF and total diffs as percent of total development costs and returns. We reached out to the various professionals in the development industry to ensure that the assumptions were utilized for the development costs were accurate. The TUMF makes up about 1 to 2 percent of the total development costs and returns, with retail uh, again being on the high end and office on the low end. Total development costs and returns include items such as construction costs, architecture and engineering costs, uh, fees, and the developer's expected return. Next, we have slides that provide diff comparisons amongst your jurisdictions in the Sun region. First is a single family residential. Again, the average is about $48,000 per unit. Jurisdictions are shown in alphabetical order from left to right, with March JPA shown on the far right and the county uh, the next two over. There are a few jurisdictions below or at the $40,000 per unit range, and some above $55,000 per unit. In total, there are 12 jurisdictions or areas below the subregion's average. It's important to point out that some jurisdictions lie within multiple uh, water districts or school districts, so uh, we chose an area of the jurisdiction or the county that will most likely experience a lot of development in the, in the, coming, in the coming years. So for the county, we chose uh, Temescal as well as Winchester. Temescal Valley, I apologize. Next is a comparison of DIS for multifamily residential. The average for the subregion is about $30,000 per unit. And with the multifamily, we have around, we have 11 jurisdictions or areas that are below the subregion's average of $30,000 per unit. Here's a comparison of DIS for a 265,000 square foot high cube industrial area. Uh, sorry, high cube industrial use. Uh, the average for this is $5.19 per square foot. And with this use, we have 13 jurisdictions or areas that are below the subregion's average. Next is a comparison of diffs for a 10,000 square foot retail building. The average retail is about $23.63 per square foot. And with this use, we have 13 jurisdictions or areas that are below the subregion's average. Then lastly, we have a comparison of diffs for a 20,000 square foot uh, class A or B office building. The average for this use in our subregion is $14.06 per square foot. And for this use, we have nine jurisdictions or areas that are below the subregion's average. So we want to make sure that we convey the study as an exercise to gather and analyze data in the subregion. Uh, we do feel like this is a worthwhile study, so we want to continue to do it on, on a consistent basis, so we'll hopefully be able to do this um, in 2020. And as was the case in 2016, we're happy to provide presentations to your respective councils or staff. Uh, Chris Gray will actually be giving a presentation to the city of Corona, uh, I think in a couple days. So with that, Mr. Chair, uh, this is a receiving file, but we're happy to take any questions. All right, thank you, Christopher. Any uh, questions? Seeing none, appreciate Good it. Report, though. Good report. Good report. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, next is a report on West Riverside County Clean Cities Coalition. Kyle Rodriguez. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Good afternoon. My name is Kyle Rodriguez, staff analyst here at WRCOG. Today, I'm here to provide a general background and activity updates for our Clean Cities Coalition. Clean Cities is a partnership with the United States Department of Energy that promotes the use of alternative fuel vehicles and energy efficient transportation. Due to the Energy Policy Act, Clean City coalitions have saved more than 8.5 billion gallons of gasoline since the program's inception in 1993. The Western Riverside County Clean Cities has been in the area for 23 years and has saved more than 9.6 million gallons of gasoline. 
There are over 85 coalitions throughout the United States which serve as the foundation of clean cities. Coalitions are designed to advance energy, economic, and environmental security of the United States by supporting advanced technology vehicle use. So both, pu both public and private stakeholders back clean cities throughout the Western Riverside County subregion. <clears throat> Coalitions are led by clean city coordinators who tailor projects and activities on unique opportunities within our local communities. Coordinators such as myself will meet with our local stakeholders to help implement alternative and renewable fuels, encourage idle reductions, and guide emerging transportation technology. So what does clean cities do for our members? As members look into replacing older vehicles, we will help coordinate which vehicle best fits for purchase. We will help educate members on alternative vehicles and provide technical assistance to evaluate any of the city needs. We've helped members plan new infrastructure at any stage they are in. From beginning to end, we will assist in directing the necessary tools needed, such as funding, partnerships, and locations. Our online alternative fuel tool will help our coalition accomplish three main objectives. It's going to show what alternative fueling infrastructure we currently have in our subregion. It's then going to help us identify what's missing. And then it's going to provide tools to help us address these missing tools, such as funding and partnership opportunities. Our next steps, excuse me, our next steps for our GIS tool is to help train our members so they feel confident using this through webinars. We are going to facilitate Alt Car Expo, and this is an Inland Empire area fuel and technology workshop. The mission of Alt Car Expo is to provide an accessible and comprehensive setting while, where both industry and public can discover all the existing alternatives to the way they use energy and transportation. Alt Car will be October 16th at the Convention Center. There will be ride and drives, vehicle showcases, and listening sessions, and that's only half of what's to come. Displayed are the Western Riverside County's 2018 results of our alternative fuel projects. There's, almost, there's over 5,000 alternative fleet vehicles in our subregion, and we have reduced over 13,000 tons of greenhouse gas emissions. We are always looking to connect fleets with information to help them understand alternative fuel vehicles, fueling infrastructure, new mobility solutions, and other transportation technologies. We will put people in contact with potential partners, vendors, or subject matter experts. If you have any questions or you would like to have your city be a part of our coalition, I'd be very happy to set up a future meeting. In closing, we see our region deepening our, excuse me, in closing, we see our region deepening its leadership, creating opportunities for alternative fuels and advanced technology deployment. Clean Cities continues to be a big part of this change. That concludes my presentation of Clean Cities Coalition. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee for your time. Thank you. Anyone have questions for Kyle? Seeing none. Oh, sorry. Yep. It, I, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> You're up. I just had a question. We have uh, in Norco, we use an alternative source of totally organic material, single horsepower. Would that be covered? <laughs> All, any alternative fuel? What? <laughs> April Fools. <laughs> he, he's been working on that all weekend. <laughs> all righty then. Any serious questions? <laughs> Moving right on. Um, Mr. Johnson, I, I know there was no technical advisory committee meeting. Do you still have something? To report on? No. The only thing I was going to report is that Mr. Bishop runs a very efficient organization, as can be seen by the speed we're getting through the agenda today, and we didn't need to have a meeting this last month, so I have nothing to report. All right. Thank you. We'll move on to uh, reports from committee representatives, starting with uh, SCAG, Regional Council, and Policy Committee members. Anyone, anyone like to speak? No one from uh, any of the SCAG? Uh, let's see, San Jacinto, no? Oh, okay. All right, uh, Ben? Ben uh, Benoit from SCAG, uh, from uh, AQMD. Sure, well, actually we haven't had our meeting yet, it'll be next week on uh, Friday, but uh, nothing major to report at the moment. Okay, uh, CalCog, Brian Tisdale. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, um, I have a report in, in the report. So um, just a couple of things I wanted to point out. I, I attended the meeting up in Yosemite, so if anyone's never been there in the winter, beautiful time to go. Um, that, that's a good part. Uh, a, a lot of conversation on the governor's housing and what the governor wants to do. I'm sorry. There we go. Uh, a lot of information was given out on the governor and what he wants to do for his housing. Um, a lot of money available, a lot of money for planning, about $250 million in planning grants. They're going to be given $125 million to regional planning agencies. So that's some good information. Uh, some of their approaches, I'm not quite sure we all agree with them, but um, th there was, there's going to be money available. Uh, CalCog is also tracking bills now, so if you want to go to their website and look at some of the bills, and they're, they're taking positions on bills. So if, if you ever get a chance to look at it and you want to provide me some feedback for our next quarterly meeting, I will gladly take it back up there, because uh, a lot of the folks from the north, they think a little bit different than we think down here. So, what? yeah, just a little bit, just, just <laughs> a tad bit. Um, yeah, the other big thing I thought was interesting, East Sacramento is doing this thing, what they call microtransit, and uh, that, that's sort of an inter interesting way to look at transportation going from the big RTA type things, and I'm not recommending that down here. I'm just saying it was an in interesting concept for a community. So if cities are interested in that type of stuff, look at what East Sacramento is doing. It was very interesting. And... Um, I think that's it. Everything else.